In order to write the code for the times table task, we need to break it down. Now, we've already broken down in class, so as you can see on the screen at the moment, you've got the five main steps. The first step is the step we're going to start off with, and that is text window.read. So we're going to ask the user for a value. So I'm going to go to, go to small basic, and I'm going to start off with that exact code, text window dot read. And this is really important. When you write a bit of code, um, run it. See what happens. Now, at the moment, nothing's happening, but it is allowing me to type. Well, that's all good and well, but it didn't ask me a question. It didn't ask you me, okay, what times table would I like to look at? So this is where we fill in the blanks. In order to um, get it to display something, well, I need to make sure I use text window dot write. How do I know this? Well, if we remember back to our table here, I want to display some text. That means I use this bit of code. This is why this table is very helpful. So text window dot right line. And I'm going to type in, please enter a number to display. And I'll leave it at that. I'm going to run it now. And as you can see, it says, please enter a number display. I can enter a number, and it's happy. Now, the next step is I haven't put that one in, the value equals. So I need to put that in as well. Now, the reason I have to put this in is because otherwise what will happen is it will read a number and then do nothing with it. So we need to assign it to a variable so I can use it later in my program. So let's just run and test again, because you should always run and test when you've done something. And it seems to be happy. So the first part of my code has been written. Let's go back to the sections. So section one has been written. So let's do section two. I need to start with the number one. Okay, well, that's very easy. I'm going to start with the number one. And that's just that bit of code there. That's nice and easy. So section one, two has been done. Section three says display one times the user's value. Now to display a value, I need to use text window dot right line. So let's try that out. So text window dot right line, and then it says display one times the user's value. One times the user's value. Now the user's value is value there, okay? Because that's what the user's typed in. So I'm going to run it now. Let's try this time. 12, it prints off 12 again. Now why did it print off 12? Well, it prints out 12 because 12 times 1 is 12. But that's not very neat and tidy, is it? If I type in 12, it doesn't really tell me what it's doing. So let's try this. Let's try 1 times 12 like that. Let's try that. Maybe put an equal sign in as well. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to make it look a bit neater. That's good. So let's move on to the next step. Step 4, move on to the next number. Okay, well the next number is going to be 2, so I can go x equals 2. I can run it again. It seems to be working. And then repeat until all 12 are displayed. Now, now I'm going to need a while loop. So, while loops have a star value, which is there. The thing I'm going to repeat, which is this bit here and an endpoint. So while x is less than or equal to 12, that is my endpoint. This is the code I'm going to repeat. And hopefully you've noticed I've made a mistake. Now, although 2 is the next number, you know, 1 and 2, I want to keep moving on to the next number. So actually, because I'm using a while loop, I'm better off doing this. And you've seen this before, x equals x plus 1. That's actually what I wrote down 
here in the solution, x equals x plus 1, move on to the next number. So every time it loops, every time it repeats this, it always moves on to the next number. And that's why it looks like that and not x equals 2. So let's run this code. Let's see what happens. So 12. That was not exactly what we were hoping for. It could, it's printed out 12 times, but it's printing out the same thing. And that's because I've got 1 here. So I'm going to change this 1 to be x. Why x? Well, x is at 1 initially. And x is going to change every time it loops until it gets to 12. So if I run this, you'll see the difference. You see it goes 12, 24. Well, the answer on the right is definitely correct now. But it's still saying 1 times. And that's because of this number here. So if I change that for x, let's see what that does. Oh, no, that's still not right because it's typing out x. Now the reason why it's printing out the letter x instead of the variable x is because it's inside the quotation marks. I'm going to take it out of the quotation marks and I'm going to put the plus next to it like that. I'm going to run that now and hopefully I get my times table. Let's just make sure it is working. Let's see my 133 times table. Yeah, that looks correct. Um, and there you go, that's the full times table code. What I've shown you is how you can build up your program over time, fix the bugs as you go along, and testing, testing, testing. Always testing your code to make sure it's working. Here's the final code. Have a go, make sure you can get it working.